Hey, welcome back to the future. But is it a dark dystopian future? Or is it a future filled with hope and promise? Well, if you're talking about DC Comics, it depends what future you're talking about, right? Because they've, over the years, they've had many different stories set in many different uh, time periods in the future. Are those all part of the same timeline? Or uh, are they multiple worlds in the DC universe? Well, Brian Michael Bendis is going to attempt to answer that question with uh, Legion of Superheroes Millennium, Part 1, today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome back. Today, we talk about Legion of Superheroes Millennium. I'm Dan Shaheen, and I'm going to break it down for you a little bit today. So... Legion of Superheroes Millennium is a uh, two-part series that's meant to introduce us to uh, the Legion of Superheroes and the latest iteration of the Legion of Superheroes, right? Legion of Superheroes have had many attempts at reboots over the years since it originally appeared way back in the Silver Age. Uh, so, but this isn't just about the Legion. This is about the various future continuities that have... Uh, been shown in DC Comics throughout the years and sort of tying a connective thread through them with, of all characters, uh, the Rose and the Thorn. So, in the future, right, DC Comics, uh, we, we've seen the story of Commandy, the last boy on Earth, right? He's raised in a bunker called Commandy. Uh, he's named after. Uh, the planet is, uh, basically, humans have fallen. The animals have risen. It's... Really, it's Jack Kirby kind of going a little bit nuts on Planet of the Apes type concepts. But hey, man, that's Kirby plus Planet of the Apes is a pretty cool combination if you ask me. So I understand why there's always been a lot of love for this series. Even though it's not one of my personal all-time favorites, I'll admit I haven't read much beyond maybe the first several issues. But I understand its importance and place in the heart of many uh, DC Comics fans. Tommy Tomorrow, a lot less so. Tommy Tomorrow of the Planeteers, I do n I've do. never read it. Um, I've not heard a lot about it. I don't hear people with a lot of fond memories of the Planeteers. To me, this is one of the, like, not second tier, but third tier, tertiary tier characters from the DC Universe. Uh, sort of that sci-fi anthology side of the DC Universe. Uh, can Bendis make it interesting again? Well, we'll see. Um... And then as we push further into the future, we get to uh, the Legion of Superheroes, right? And the Legion of Superheroes are in the 31st century originally. And it was sort of this goofy kids clubhouse and Superboy would time travel there and be a part of this sort of group of teenage superheroes in the future. Everything was kind of brightly colored and, and um, lots of crazy superpowers from... Uh, you know, basically like a United Nations of Planets type deal um, where everybody comes from a different planet, and has different powers, lots of goofy stuff, a lot of fun stories and fun characters. Something that never really caught on for uh, in later generations. I mean, this book has been the idea of the Legion of Supers has been rebooted since I've been reading comics. I can think of at least like a half a dozen times from Keith Giffen. Uh, they're kind of more serious run to the to the modern day Legion, Legion 89 stuff to so many reboots. So many people have tried it. They've taken it in a dark direction. They've taken it in a throwback direction. We've tried a lot of different things and Bendis is going to try it one more time. So uh, <laughs> let's look at Tommy Tomorrow though one more time. So Tommy Tomorrow, um, this outfit kind of, says it all this is a, a an age gone by in comics when like dudes wore a lot more pink and lavender and and uh, with yellow accoutrements and you know it's your sort of uh, military future fantasy right so how does bendis gonna bring that all together and tie these disparate future universes together well the only way to find out is to go to the million dollar comics cam so uh, let's see what's going on. Legion of Superheroes Millennium opens with a few pages by Jim Lee, right? And we get to see um, 
the rose and the thorn, right? The rose and the thorn. If you've been, if you've read any Superman or, um, uh, I think she's tipping into Event Leviathan as well. You know that the rose and the thorn is like the perfect Bendis character at DC. She's like the Jessica Jones of uh, DC, and Bendis is determined to make her almost exactly that, in my opinion. Um, whereas with Jessica Jones. He went back and created this character, this troubled female character with sort of a weird power set, didn't really want to be a super reluctant superhero, but inserted a retroactive continuity of her uh, in the Marvel Universe as being like an Avenger in the 80s as Jewel or whatever, stuff that never really happened, uh, or that we had never really seen before, inserted into continuity. Fair enough, it worked, right? Jessica Jones, popular character, um, the, uh, both the comic and the TV show were pretty good. So Rose and Thorn, right? Rose and Thorn, rather than going back and inserting her backwards in continuity, Bendis had the bright idea to insert her retroactively into future continuity. So the idea here is that the Rose and the Thorn has just realized, uh, well, not yet, but in the future, in the not too distant future, realizes that she's immortal. Okay? And here she is talking to somebody and, 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 and telling her about the story and sort of flashing back. We get a nice Jim Lee Superman glory shot of her, him fighting uh, Thorn, I guess, who th they've said is was a super villainous, right? And I don't remember the character ever having like Superman, smack Superman with a piece of concrete and he could feel it level of powers. And I still don't understand if she has powers at this point or not. Uh, maybe that's going to be revealed, but it's not really clear. This is a Bendisism, right? Vague superpowers. Jessica Jones had it. She would sort. Could she fly? Could she not? What was her real? You know, she was strong. We knew that. But like when she would try to fly, weird things would happen. I, we, I don't quite understand from this book exactly what Rose, or rather Thorn's power set exactly is. But maybe that's not the most important thing. So now we come to the reveal of who she's talking to. She's talking to, she says, no, Madam Supergirl. I mean, Madam President. So in the future, Supergirl's the president. But if it's in the future, she's not a girl anymore. It's sure, she runs for president and, and gets that. Sure, I can believe that. But would she be president Supergirl? Would people still call her Supergirl? Was there never a Superwoman? Is that, I don't know, is that... Uh, appropriate for that kind of character like if you were a, a girl superhero and you were supergirl you grew up and became president you'd be president supergirl nitpick time sorry um so basically what what we get here is the reveal that rose was put on medication back in our days in the 20th century that 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 kept her dual personality of of thorn at bay right so she was taking she's been taking this medicine her whole life and uh or, or now up to this point in her life um but now she's lived so long she didn't even realize she was immortal or did an age until her husband died and she's like oh yeah he got old and i didn't i'm getting older uh or, or everyone around me is getting older but i'm not she finally sort of realized that i i guess you know from your own perspective if that was your life you would never really get that it seems a little bit like something people would notice and call out after the first few decades anyway uh in, in this story she is uh she's ageless right but she was on this medication and she's lived now so long that the the, the mental illness that this medication was designed to cure no longer exists in the human population Anybody who had it has died and no one knew with it has been born so like the company stopped making the drug and so she goes to President Supergirl to be like, look, I need your help. This is, something's going to happen, man. Thorn is going to come back and she's going to be mad. And Supergirl does her best politician and uh, says, look, listen, everything's going to be okay, right? Don't worry about it. Everything's going to be all right. Um, and she sort of flashes back to where she uh where it all started going wrong like she she woke up in Arkham Asylum and fought the Suicide Squad I don't know if this is a reference to a recent issue or just something that hasn't been totally revealed about where she might have gotten um, powered up not totally clear not the clear storytelling 
for a number one. I, I, I want a little bit more, but, you know, it's supposed to intrigue us and pull us in. So anyway, you know, Supergirl, President Supergirl promises, I promise you one way or another, everything is going to be okay. Very sincere promise by a politician. You know you can believe it. So right naturally we cut to, sure enough, she's off her meds and she's fighting, uh, she's beating the crap out of criminals. And the thing is, she's not just beating the crap out of them, she's killing them. She's murdering them with a ray gun. It's the future, but when in the future we find out, oh, this is the Batman Beyond future, right? So this is one of the first future continuities. Now she's lived past the modern DC age and into the Batman Beyond era, right? And she she kind of is like curious. She she's able to just beat Batman Beyond like nothing. She's got access to some kind of crazy technology we don't know where from. She's got this like magic ball thing. She just touches him and it's, he's done. And basically says, you know, wants to figure out, is he the real Batman? Is Batman, is maybe the real Batman immortal like me? Because I'm lonely. All right, he's not. So she just sort of leaves him and abandons him. And then we get to the next and then, right? And so this is the next, who knows how long, 100 years, hundreds of years later, um, we're in the uh, commandy period, right? And we get to see... Shots of Commandy, and uh, you know, in 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 the Commandy book, Superman was sort of like the savior legend of like uh, somewhere in the twenty early twenty first century, the planet went into like ecological collapse, and Superman saved us somehow, but now he's gone, right? So they've preserved Superman's uniform, and it's being held and by this like tribal elder, and um, who should show up but our girl Rose, who's like, you know what, I want that. And uh, she just kills the tribal elder, puts the Superman costume on to see if it will give her superpowers like the internet told her it would. I thought that was a pretty funny moment. It doesn't. And she decides to keep it and gets confronted by Commandy. And there's some humorous bendicisms. And then we're done with this future. And we're on to the next future, right? This is the world of Tommy Tomorrow and the Planeteers. And... I thought this was the funniest. I, I like this the art style. It's drawn in sort of a, a, a Mobius looking style, in my opinion. Um, I liked it because she sort of like goes to the Planeteer desk and like, look, I'm off my meds. I need help. I want to join up with the Planeteers. And just she's being monitored. She's talking to this really friendly guy who's very sympathetic to her. But the entire conversation is being monitored by artificial intelligence. So they... Uh, uh, basically realize that she's crazy and immediately try to capture her okay and then this is the end of part one okay and, and then we've got a lot of intro material into who are the legion of superheroes and what's going on stuff that's coming up and more future stuff like omac another one of the future um universes that's going to get tied in here cool idea but you know we didn't see any of this legion of superhero stuff in this issue we didn't see anything there is no intro to the Legion of Superheroes in this book at all. And if you're not a pretty big nerd, I mean, look, I read a lot of comics. I've been reading comics for 30 plus years, 35 years at least. I've read a lot of DC comics. Granted, I'm not an expert in all their future continuities, but man, I know enough to know what's going on when I read a comic and it was very hard to understand what's going on. Like how do these continuities tie together and why? Why do I care, right? So I I don't quite know what to say about this book. Um, I thought it was intriguing. I think the Rose and the Thorn uh, immortal character is kind of an interesting idea, but is she immortal or does she just not age? It's not really clear because, man, she must be really tough and have a lot of like strength and, and power to be able to live this, survive this long. Or does she? Because, you know, she's only, when she's Rose, she doesn't really have any powers or inclination to do anything. She turns into Thorn. I, I believe it's only at nighttime she can be the Thorn. Maybe I'm wrong about that. It's not super clear. The point is, Bendis has taken an awful lot for granted in this book and so is dc right how many times can we introduce these convoluted future uh continuities and tie them all in together and say ah, everything you knew before forget about that forget about that 30 40 years of legion stuff here's the real deal with legion uh not my favorite approach to it 
Uh, it's well known. I prefer more of like a sort of postmodern deconstructionist uh, attempt at, that would look at that old stuff and try to contextualize it and keep it within continuity, but expand and modernize on it. But man, that's a tough trick to pull off. Not everybody's Alan Moore. Not everybody has that ability. Uh, so, okay, this was a four ninety nine. Part 1 of 2 for a book that has Legion superheroes in the title but does not feature even a single panel featuring the Legion of Superheroes nor mention of Legion of Superheroes. So it's clear this is not an outreach book, I don't think, for like new people new to Legion of Superheroes. Because how could it be? There's nothing reaching out here. There's only looking in. This is a very insular book and this, in my opinion, is part of what's going wrong with a lot of DC Comics right now. To a lot of navel gazing and looking to the past and trying to resurrect older things again and again and again in ways that don't work, and not enough uh, reaching out just for crazy new approaches and 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 trying new stuff. Speaking of trying new stuff, thank you for trying out this channel. We are uh, we're growing fast thanks to your support, uh, but we need everything we can. So thank you for liking these videos. Thank you for commenting because I learned a lot from the comments and just thanks for subscribing and uh, thanks especially for watching. We'll see you next time.